our next guests of today. Uh, our next guest is a, another heavyweight when it comes to knowledge of the international car wash industry. We're connected with Tim Ewing, Executive Vice President of Turtle Wax Pro. Uh, this company specializes in chemicals for the car wash. Tim, are you there? All right. He will give a presentation about sustainability, and afterwards we get to ask him anything. Um, well, Tim, we are ready when you are. Great. Thank you. How are you today? Good. Thank you. Good. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Everybody. Good morning to you. <laughs> you. I believe you have my presentation that you uh, would, would share. Yeah, we have it ready for you. Great. Thank you. Um, great. Thank you. So my name is Tim Ewing. I'm the executive vice president of Turtle Wax Pro, which is owned and operated by um, Transchem Group out of Canada. Um, and today I'm going to talk about sustainability and how it relates into the car wash industry. So if we could just flip to the next slide, please, Arnica. Just a little bit of an agenda of what we're going to talk about here. So we'll talk a little bit about what is sustainability, the sinner circle, uh, professional car washing versus washing in your driveway, uh, water and the importance of water, eco labels, and then we'll have a brief overview at the end of it and uh, some question and answer period. Uh, to the next slide, please. So what is sustainability? I think there's a lot of definitions of that. So my team of, uh, of, of partners and chemists and scientists, uh, we worked on this together. So sustainability is the reasonable, responsible use of resources to not only meet current needs of society, but to perpetuate the same quality of life for future generations. This is not dependent on, not just dependent on environmental factors, but works in conjunction with social and economic goals, also known as the three pillars of sustainability. This is an active process that involves societal effort to achieve. To achieve sustainability, um, the European Commission has introduced the concept of a circular economy. In a circular economy, an emphasis is put on prolonging the usefulness of materials for as long as possible, while minimizing both resource input and waste that is produced in the system. A major goal of Europe's push to a circular economy is climate neutrality. By 2050, the EU aims to have an, e an economy which emits the same or less greenhouse gases into the environment than it removes. This ties into the efficient energy and resource use required for a circular economy. In addition to reduced emissions, it also involves the removal of carbon from the atmosphere through ecosystem restoration, forest protection, and carbon farming, et cetera. <clears throat> Next page, please. Sorry, Nicole. So we're speaking of circles. There's a, a there's a, a trans, in, in transitioning into in car washing and cleaning. We see another circle referred to as the sinner circle. The circle is comprised of four elements required to achieve, achieve ideal cleaning. Chemical, the products used to wash vehicles. Mechanics, the machines used in car wash, touchless, friction, self-serve. Temperature, hot water needed for cleaning, touchless mostly. And time, the duration of wash or dwell time needed for chemicals uh, to, to achieve their, their potential in touchless washing mostly as well. Relating back to the concept of a circular economy, all of these aspects require resource input. Chemicals require resources to produce and ship. Machines and wash require energy to run. Energy input required for water heaters to produce temperatures required for optimal cleaning. Time influences energy input into the process without, with amount of time machines are running in an increased idling while wash is being performed. All the elements of the center, center circle influence one another. So we can increase on one of the elements to reduce the, reduce the resource requirements for the other elements. Thank you. Can I go to the next slide, please? So, thank you. Balancing the circle. In practice, what this, this could mean is increasing the amount of chemical used in a car wash so we can reduce water temperatures, wash times, and machine usage. However, this is not ideal. As we, sh as we just as we are just shifting the resources required for the other elements to increase in resources, we need to produce and ship more chemical. Instead, we increase chemical efficiency and effectiveness, meaning we increase 
the influence of the chemical element of cleaning without increasing the resource input required and also enabling a decrease in the resource input for other elements. Thus, we have a net decrease in resources required to achieve our goal of optimal cleaning. We can increase the efficiency and effectiveness of chemicals through ingredient optimization and overall concentration. Using specialized ingredients and synergistic surfactants, we can achieve the same or improve cleaning ability with less materials. Hyper-concentrated solutions, for example, can wash more vehicles with the same amount of product. The more concentrated a product, the more washers that can produce for the same amount of resources. I look at the concentrated, hyper-concentrated chemistries with less packaging, less deliveries, less warehouse, and at the end of the day, a less carbon footprint. We can do this, by, we can achieve some of this balancing of this circle um, by using that modern chemistry and advanced equipment. It's, it's not, not about equal parts on this circle, by the way, it's about finding that balance where they're all working and the most efficient, uh, honing in on each one of them to be more, the most efficient as possible. You can speed up conveyor speeds and reducing hot waters with technologies that don't necessarily require hot water. You can improve drying times by specializing in, in, in drying agents and, and quaternary amines that you're using. Um, so, uh, yes, so can I go to the next slide, please? To the next slide, I'd like to talk about um, professional car washing versus home washing. And I, I think this is not news to a lot of people. I think we've heard a lot of it during, during this ICA show this year, and we hear it more and more all the time, is that washing that car at home, it, it may not be the best for the environment. So washing a car at a professional car wash uses way less resources than hand washing at home, um, which is contributing to a circular economy. On average, a car wash at a professional establishment uses approximately one third the amount of water used by hand washing at home. And washing at home has a bigger impact on the environment. In a professional car wash, water and chemical is collected and either reused or sent for proper treatment. At home, Wash water is often left to run into storm drains, resulting in chemical collecting in groundwater and being released into the environment. Next page, page please. Thank you. On the, on the water side of things, so water, obviously water being a major factor in professional car wash cleaning and a major resource requirement for their operation. Depending on a type of equipment, car washes can use anywhere from 100 to 900 liters of water per vehicle, with most being on the lower end of 100 to 250 liters per vehicle. Water usage will depend heavily on the quality of the establishment, and there are always ways we can reduce water. Proper equipment, maintenance, and lower water pressures are key to that. We can also reuse water. Water reclaim systems subject used water, used wash water, to a series of treatments, whether it be settling tanks, filtration, aeration, ozone treatment, or biological media. And they use that to clean the water of contaminants and residual chemical. The treated water can be used in place of fresh water in several steps of, car wash, pro of the car wash process. Looking back at the concept of a circular economy, this prolongs the usefulness of a resource and emphasizes reuse and minimizes waste. This also has the added benefit of reducing the cost when running a wash. And to make the note that not all chemicals are compatible with reclaim. It's very important to select biodegradable chemicals that can be broken down by reclaim systems. And I think it's important to, to make a note here of um, when we talk about eco-labeled products um, and biodegradable products, not just because it's an eco legal product does not necessarily mean that it's going to be uh, a product that would be compatible with your reclaim system of choice. I think it's a lot of doing your due diligence on the suppliers, on, uh, on their eco label programs when it comes to using the proper products for reclaim. I like to look at it is that if you have a reclaim system, you want to look towards that biodegradability of those chemicals that we're using that are compatible with your specific system. All systems are a little bit different and have a little bit of approach to chemistries. When it comes to uh, situations where car washes may not be able to support a reclaim system, 
that is when uh, leaning towards more of the eco labels, the Nordic Swan kind of approaches um, may be beneficial. As an important con contribution to car washes, <clears throat> uh, sorry, an important contribution to car wash can make to sustainability is selecting to use products that are harmless to the environment as possible. Like I said, using chemicals that are registered under the eco labeling program is a good way to ensure minimal environmental impact. And again, I get a good way to skip the validation process and that is taking care of pr proof of an eco label. Products such as Nordic Swan and EU eco label enforce adherence to strict criteria in order to be approved. These criteria help ensure products are both aerobically and anaerobically biodegradable, not bioaccumulative, and do not present an acute or chronic toxicity hazard to ecosystems. They may also limit the content of VOCs or volatile organic compounds in the products, limiting their contribution to tropospheric ozone. Uh, the next slide, please. You can skip one more, please. Thank you, Renika. So just to summarize a little bit here, there are many ways the car wash industry can contribute to the development of a circular economy. We can do, it, do so by selecting the right products. You know, we can reduce energy requirements for mechanics, temperature and time, reduce products usage, decreasing the impact of shipping and wastes created by packaging, reduce the environmental impacts of chemicals by using eco label products. By choosing professional car wash establishments, we can reduce water consumption reduce environmental contamination by chemicals used during home washing. We can also, by using reclaim systems, we can further reduce water consumption, vastly reduce the amount of wastewater produced by professional car wash establishments. And also by using our um, up, updating your equipment and staying on top of new technologies will help decrease on the energies used in there as well. It's all about doing our part at the end of the day to help shrink the sinner's circle. Thank you. All right. That's the presentation. Thank you, Tim, for the presentation. Very, very welcome, Renata. <laughs> we do have some uh, some questions uh, for you. Um, do you think there are large differences between the North American market uh, and other markets in the world, or the European market in particular? Uh, when it comes to sustainability, I or believe. In general. Yeah. It, when it it, to chemicals, it's important globally, I believe. Um, but I think everybody, and I think Arthur called on it a little bit earlier in the previous presentation that every country, every continent, for that matter, has seems to have different different criteria to meet in different standards. So wherever you're moving to, it, it seems to be different. Obviously, I think the, some of the higher standards of sustainability and uh, environmental protection does is driven by the northern part of Europe. Um, in the Nordic countries and Scandinavian countries may be setting a precedent for the future to come. Um, in North America, um, it's the water reclaim piece is, is, is major. You see it in more major cities and, and regions and pockets in different states and different provinces. And, and, and depending on the, on the territory and the region and the governing factors behind that, we're banning that car washing in driveways and restricting uh, forcing people basically to use automatic car washes. I see it globally. It's just that little bit different levels uh, um, depending on where you are. Yeah, so sustainability is growing in importance more and more. Um, do you think that customers are willing to pay a little bit more if they know that they're at a, in a sustainable or in an environmentally friendly wash? I would like to think though, and I think that's one of the challenges being a chemical manufacturer of what we are is how can we achieve that from a, from our perspective and still maintain those costs? That seems to be the demand that the people are asking for out there. Sure, people are willing to be green or look at a more sustainable approach to car washing, but paying for more of it is, is I think everybody knows the car wash industry that it is. It comes down to the to the to the dollars and cents of it all. Um, so there, there there lies a challenge. I think there are specific regions and specific areas and specific customers, operators, distributors that have different values and, and views of sustainability and what it means to them. So it's kind of a little bit all over the map, but yeah, I think there are specific 
territories and regions and people that will pay more for that to be able to promote that and market that. A whole different inner circle that if you wanted to be more yeah. environmentally friendly, that circle is bigger than the amount paid for it may, might be smaller. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How do we convince customers not to wash at home, but to wash in a professional wash? Well, we need to re, re, re <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> uh, but uh, how, do, how do we stop them from washing at home? I think it's more making them aware. How do you make the end user aware and cognizant of what they're doing may not be beneficial to the environment. I don't think that knowledge is out to the end user. Sure, we understand it. We are in the industry. We are we are operating uh, car washes. We are you know cognizant of what's going on around us. But that end user who's buying that jug of soap off of a off of a off of a shelf at a retail level, they don't maybe they don't they're not aware to that. So it's getting that message across to the to the minutes through television commercials or, or or just keep continue to discuss it and having our distributors and our and our customers relaying that message to their customer. That's also uh, a job for Turtle Wax, or, or is it something that the dealers and the operators uh, need to be doing? I think maybe, it's a, maybe it's both. Both. I think it, it can it can drive, be driven from the top down, which is from the from the manufacturer. And uh, yeah, you, you 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 sell that, you educate your people on that, and hopefully it's like that, you know, so on and so on. That word continues down the path and gets into into the minds of the of the of the person that's like, oh. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be washing my drove. I didn't realize that I could be contaminating my 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 salmon or my 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 trout that's down on the river down there. They got to really, you know, it'll really open up their minds if they were a little bit more aware to it. So, getting that message across, it's a difficult one, but it can be done. Yeah, some awareness is needed there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you spoke uh, about uh, chemicals either being suited or not suiting for for reclaiming uh, water. Uh, are the chemicals of Turtle Wax Pro suited for this? Uh, absolutely, yes. We, we have a, uh, a reclaim friendly chemical uh, line. Uh, we're very cognizant. We have a good team of technical advisors here that understand and uh, know all of the type, different types of reclaim systems that are available. Um, some, and re it's really understanding the reclaim piece of it, but yes, our chemistries are. Um, like I said before, just because not necessarily having an eco labeled product is our, our constitutes that it's a, a, a reclaim friendly or reclaim compatible. So again, it's doing your research, talking to your suppliers, understanding the components that maybe affect the performance of your reclaim system. So yes, Transcam Turtle Wax Pro, we have been very cognizant and been working with our team of, and understanding the reclaim world for a number of years now uh, with our own reclaim um, equipment as well. So we are, yes, we have the products. You do. All right. So is, um, is, is the entire line of products suited? There's always something there, whatever kind of car wash that you have, there's always something you can choose from the line of, of the Turtle Wax products? I, yes, I'd like to believe so. Um, and we are chemical specialists at the end of the day where we have no problem developing products for the industry that is necessary if we do not have it. We are, we are, uh, that's what we do. And that's what we, that's what we built our, uh, our structured, our, our backbone on is being that flexible kind of chemical company that we're willing to work. If it makes sense, we're willing to work with our customers to introduce the product that they feel they they need or they need it for their for their customer base. Right. It's uh, in your presentation. You said that um, uh, the products can be more concentrated, so you can have lower transport costs. And uh, uh, but I was wondering, does that involve? Uh, less resources, or is it more concentrated, and does it require the same amount of resources? Um, it's more concentrated. I think that from the resource side of thing, if you go right back to the manufacturing side of that, you're you're using less water in manufacturing. At the end of the day, you like to think that we're losing. Well, we are. We're using less plastics, and obviously, the plastic world is where the the solution for replacing plastic in car wash chemical industry is something that we all look forward to. Um, and I think, you know, you're still using, you're not using any more water or anything different when it comes to a car wash. Um, you're using less, the same amount of water, maybe a little bit less, but this is the chemical at the end of the day, you're using way less of, we're using milliliters, uh, under five milliliters in some cases um, versus, you know, using ounces uh, in the past. All right. Well, thank you, Tim, for sharing all of your insights uh, with us.
Uh, TurtleWorks Pro is an exhibitor of the show, so check out their booth. And you can also find Tim there if you want to know uh, more. Our next guests are joining us from Finland. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us, uh, Tim. Thank you very much, Renika. <laughs> thank you, everyone. All right.